Hi guys, it's Leo from MediaWay here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we've got another very exciting Blender tutorial. I'm giving away all the secret sauce today. We're going to create this amazing car explosion cinematic epic image in Blender. Um, I'm going to give you all the source files you need. Um, you can download all the models for free from BlenderKit. Uh, I'm actually providing the JPEG of the explosion for you to use as well. And finally, I'm also going to leave a copy of the Blender file in the description below so you can download it yourself and enjoy it at your leisure. We're going to cover using lighting as in meters. We're going to cover some particle systems, using the compositor to add a color grade. So much good, good stuff. Let's get started. You can see my keyboard shortcuts in the bottom left corner of the screen. So we press A to select everything, X to delete everything, click delete. Next, we're gonna add all the assets from Blender Kit. So if you don't have Blender Kit enabled, it's very easy, it's built into Blender. You go to Edit Preferences, um, just search for Blender Kit. If you just start typing Blender, you'll see it there, just make sure it's ticked, make sure it's on. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're gonna add some models first. So the first thing we're going to add is a car. This is like the hero asset. Um, and it is this beautiful car here. Let's pop that in there. Now we're gonna add also a, um, it's called a facade, F-A-C-A-D-E. And it is this one here, St. Charles facade, okay. And this is gonna be kind of behind the car in the background. Right, that's also, while well, we've got that St. Charles facade, we'll just click it here, select hierarchy, uh, shift D to duplicate, then press X to duplicate on the right here, and shift D and then press X and duplicate it on the left here. So just so we've got a nice big long background to use. We also need a road for the car. Let's just search for road. Oh, if I spell it right, R O A D. And we've got, uh, I've got to find the, right, this one's called procedural two lanes road profile. We'll drop that down there. Uh, so this road is actually procedural, uh, which is great because it means you can make it as long as you want and any shape you want. So if you just toggle that down so you can see all the parts of the road and click the one that says road shape. Then if we just tab into edit mode, and I press seven on the number cad for top view, you can actually see the curve of the road here. So if we just select some of these, you can actually see we can reshape the road just like that. G to grab, R to rotate, that's the last one, R to rotate, G to grab, and we'll just We'll just kind of cheat a bit and uh, we'll start it there like that. Okay, so the road's more or less straight now. So we'll just, again, click on this, select hierarchy, just grab it and put it in about, yeah, about central, that's fine. Okay, um, we also need some trees. So we're going to search for, it's called low poly tree. Um, I think it was the first one here. So we grab that and we'll just drop it down here on the right. And this is a nice asset. In fact, let's just, uh, what we do, we'll move this one, G to grab, X to move it across on the X axis. So this is basically quite simple. It's a plane uh, with a particle emitter on. So it's using this tree asset here and it's replicating the tree on this uh, plane here randomly. So if I just press seven again to get into top view, G to grab, and we'll just move it. So it's kind of close to the road just here. Okay, so now let's just have a quick look down here. So let's get a few things into position a bit better. So we're gonna grab the car. So the car basically is parent to this empty here. If you look at uh, the car here, we've got an empty and we can grab it to move the whole thing. So we're gonna move it forward a bit. So G to grab, Y to constrain to the Y axis. We're gonna move it about to here. We also need to just move it so it sits on the road a bit. So G to grab, Z to move up on the Z axis. 
uh, you just want those wheels just to be touching the road and if I just press the full stop key on the number pad it centers around that that looks as though it's uh, about right I might just rotate it very very slightly just to get both those wheels touching the road that's it okay so we're nearly there now with all the assets so we're going to add in a camera let's get the camera in next so can shift a to add in the camera and we're going to just get the viewport kind of close to where I want it I'm going to go for about there maybe down a bit now you press control alt zero and that puts the camera in the viewport um, where the viewport view is and then we're going to press shift and tilde and I'm just going to move the mouse so like this. You can also move the camera now with A, S, D, W to basically move it left or right, up, forward or backwards, or Q and E, move it up and down. So I'm just going to position it about there, maybe back a little bit, give it a little bit of space. The other thing I'm going to do, if you go to the item menu, you can just put a little bit of rotation on the camera. I'm just going to tilt the camera very slightly to just bring it inboard a little bit there. Right, okay, looking good. Let's just have a quick look at the render options. So we're gonna to switch to Cycles Render. It needs to be set to GPU. Now I'm using uh, the K-Cycles version of Blender, which um, which actually there's a link to in the description below. Um, K-Cycles is very similar to the, the vanilla Blender, except the render engine is much quicker. It's twice as quick. Um, it makes working in Blender really nice and fast to use when you're using cycles and it renders twice as quick i really recommend it but uh, if you don't have k cycles regular blender is just fine what you'll need to click is in your denoising um set both of these on and you probably also want to have uh, adaptive sampling on as well i'm going to use because i've got cycles x i'm going to use ultra denoiser which is a little bit quicker and a little bit better so let's have a quick look where we're at. Okay, so the scene so far is very dark. Um, we're gonna need to add some lights in just a second. So let's just, um, let's, let's get the world setting correct first. So the background, we'll just change that to more of a, a deep blue color. It can be quite dark. Um, and we're gonna add some lights using uh, well, firstly, let's switch the headlights on. So click on the headlights on the car. Um, so you've got a glass shader for the headlight and inside the headlight, let's just change that to an emission shader. And we'll give it a strength of 20 to give it some glow. And we also, need, we're gonna light the scene with an explosion, which is pretty exciting. Right, so let's get that explosion in. Yeah, there's also a little gap just here. I don't know if you can see that on the right of the scene. We're just gonna move the facade across. Where's that? Let's select all of these. Right click, select objects and just grab uh, an X, so it's G and X. We're just gonna move that across just very slightly just to fill that hole. Okay, so it's still quite dark. Let's go back to a different view. Um, so we're gonna add our explosion in next. Right, so the explosion, this is a really nice trick for the explosion. So we can do file, import, images as planes. If you don't have to see that, uh, images as planes, that again is in your edit preferences. Just search for images as planes and switch it on. Um, let's go to graphic explosion and we just import it. Click import images as plane. And there you can see there's that explosion graphic. Let's just get a bit close to that. So that is just a, a flat JPEG file. I'm gonna do some clever stuff to it to make it even better. So let's just go to the camera view. We're just gonna S to scale that. Let's just bring that up, grab it on the Z, grab it on the X, and we'll just have it so we can just see those bits of explosion coming in the corner and it coming off the screen. Okay. In fact, let's just move it back a bit because we want the explosion to be coming off the building. So it's G and Y we'll pop it somewhere around there okay let's have a look at that now okay i think we could maybe still scale it a bit more because it's kind of exciting that's the focus really of the piece g y x sorry gx just 
fiddle it around till it's about in the right position. So another little trick we're going to do, if you just click on the explosion and tab into edit mode, and we're going to subdivide that by right clicking and clicking subdivide. I'm going to click the center part and we're going to switch on uh, proportional editing and we're going to make it a sphere shape. And we're just going to click on the very center vertex and we're just going to grab it. Uh, let's use your mouse wheel to scale it up. And we're going to press Y to, to constrain to the Y axis and we're just going to push it in a little bit like this. So it kind of has this kind of spherical shape. Tab out of edit mode, just grab on the Y and bring it forward a bit. And we're also going to do right click shade smooth. That just gives a bit of three dimensionality to the explosion here. Okay, so let's just press zero to get back to the camera mode. Right, the next thing we need to do is make this an emission. So light comes from the explosion and also we're going to make the black part of the JPEG transparent. So if you pop into the shading tab, Right, you can see we've got we've got the explosion, we've got the output and the principal BSDF. We're going to press click on the principal D BSDF and press X. We are going to add in a mix shader. So it's sorry, I didn't say that. So shift A to add, then I clicked on search, then I typed in mix, and then I clicked on mix shader, and that adds in a mix shader. Let's just delete that one. We're going to connect that up to the surface and we are going to add three other things. So the first thing we're going to do is add an emission shader. So that's shift A, search emission, there it is. And the color from the image is going to be the color of the light that is emitted and it's going to go into this part of the shader here. So you can see now we're getting some light actually let's go into cycles we're getting some light coming in if we increase the strength of that say to let's try 20 again okay we're getting some good light now coming from this emission and we also want to make the black transparent so we've got a little trick to do that so we're going to add in a transparent shader transparent bsdf and that is going to go into the upper part of the mix shader and the factor so basically now we want to tell Blender which parts of the shader we want to be transparent. So we're going to add in a color gradient, so a color ramp. Pop that over there. And we are going to make the color the factor. And we are going to pop in the explosion there. And now what this does, it actually lets you control how much of the image you want to come through. So if we put the ramp like that, only very brightest parts of the image come through. And if we put it this, this way, this allows everything to come through except the very black parts of the image. So now we've got a lovely sort of soft edge to the image with no black bits at all. Let's go back to the layout view. Now it started to come together. We'll pop it to cycles view again there. Oh, doesn't that look good? So we've got nice explosion at the back. The car is still quite dark. We're going to fix that. I'm going to kind of do a bit with cheat to fix that. So we are going to duplicate the explosion, shift D. And I'm going to move it up, grab Z. And we are going to kind of, let's just move that around, grab it and rotate it a little bit on the x-axis and sort of just point it at the car so we're kind of lighting up the front of the car as well with the explosion it kind of gives that nice warm glow to both parts of the car i'm just going to move it a little bit closer press seven for top view grab it rotate it a little bit Okay, now if we look at the camera view, we're getting a nice sort of nice look on the front of the camera. Brilliant. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in some sparks coming from the explosion just to give it a bit more life. So we're going to add in um, a, an icosphere. And that is going to be our spark emitter. So we're going to put that, let's just pop into the, this view here. Seven again for top view, grab it, and we're gonna put it about where the center of the explosion is, 
G, Z. Get it about right in the center of the explosion. So this is going to be where the sparks are coming from. So we're also going to, I'm just going to duplicate this arcosphere, Shift D, and we'll chuck it over there so we can't see it. And we're going to set up the spark material. So we're going to click on the arcosphere over here. We're going to have a new material, and this is going to be our spark. I'm going to call it, we'll call it spark. In fact, we'll call this arcosphere also emitter particle. Spark. So we recognize it later. Okay. So if we go to the shading tab, press X to delete the principal BSDF. Going to add it in a particle info node. We're going to add in a color ramp. And this color ramp is going to determine the, sh the color of the sparks. So just click on the black bit. Going to make that maybe white or very just off white, very slightly. We're going to add in another node here, and that can be orange. So we keep it quite saturated, and then we'll add it in a another one there. Oops, let's pop it this side, and we we'll make that one sort of a darker red. And the last one can be just quite a dark, dark red color, just sort of to fade out. So the spark we're going to use the lifetime node from particle info as the factor. So basically, when the spark's brand new, it's white. And as it gets older, it fades to orange, red, then dark gray before it dies. And we're also going to use an emission shader as the color for the spark. We just connect all those up. I'm going to put strength of 20 in there again. Right, so we've set up what our particle is going to be. That's over here. But we want them to emit now from this sort of the flame, really. So if you click on your particle, where the particle emitter is going to come from, and then go down to your particle settings, we're going to add in a new particle system. You don't really need to give it a name. We'll have 10,000 particles emitted. Um, we'll give this, give them a life. Let's start at five and end at 20. And we'll have a slight randomness on the lifetime. We need to change the velocity of the sparks. So we'll set normal and tangent both to 20. We want to render them not as a halo. Let me just show you what that looks like. So we don't want them to render as a halo because that's ugly. We want them to render as an object and our object is going to be our emitter spark. So now when we render them out like that, you can see them coming out of the explosion like that. Okay, that looks good. Right, the other thing we want to do, let's just go back to our render settings. Let's make a few changes down here. So we want to add motion blur on. And we also want our camera. Let's go sort the camera out. Let's click on the camera. Um, we'll have a bit wider angled lens. Let's go for 35. Um, we want depth of field. And we want to focus on the front of the car. I think the lower the f-stop, the more depth of field you get. So let's go for something like 1.5. And that gives us a bit of depth of field. Great. Let's just do a quick test render. Okay, so a couple of things I want to change there. I want the explosion to be much bigger. And I want to get a bit closer to the car, have a bit more drama. Let's sort those both out. So click on your explosion plane, press S to scale. All right, I'm going to press 7. We're just going to bring it in front of the facade. Grab. Go up to about there. The car, let's click on the center of the car, grab the Y axis. Let's just bring it quite close to the edge of the frame here. The car's escaping really fast here. Okay. Now, um, the other thing, we've got a little bit of blue peeking out from the under the facade. So we could uh, click on the, well, we've still got the car selected. We'll click the road as well and just grab it up on the Z axis. 
just put it up just a fraction there like that and the camera I think I'm just going to move the camera so I'm just going to go up very slightly on the camera okay so we're going to move into the compositor and click use nodes so we need to add in an image viewer let's just move that over there shift a and the search for the viewer and that basically just means we can actually see the image in the background in fact we'll just do a shift right click to join those two together we are going to add in a glare node and this is just going to give us, let's switch it to fog glow, mix minus 0.7, threshold 0.2. This is just going to give us a nice little glow around the headlights. And we're also going to do a quick color grade. So we'll search for RGB curves, pop that in there. And we're going to add a bit of blue to the shadows. I would like that. So this kind of gives you that sort of famous orange and teal look. It's sort of in a quick and easy way really. And we're just going to click on the red node and we're just going to click and add a bit more red just into the highlights of the image. So we've kind of got just like a very subtle shade going up here. Okay, so that's kind of added some nice glow with the glare node and also a slight color grade um, with the RGB curves node. Okay guys, Leo from the future here. Just a quick note, at this point when I press render, my computer crashed and I hadn't saved the file. So that's a lesson to you there. So I spent the next probably half an hour messing around with the file, just tweaking little bits in here, moving, moving the light source around, moving the camera, moving the car. I changed the car color as well. Just some tiny little tweaks and you can spend ages doing this in Blender and I think it's part of the fun of Blender. So I encourage you to do the same on your file and you know, just mess with all the little details until you get an image that you're really happy with. This is the file that I end up with. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and learned something new. At some point, I'd really like to animate this scene for a tutorial. So if you'd like that as well, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe this video for more, and hopefully I'll see you soon in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.